Okay, I see a few people are joining. We are going to give it just about one minute and then we will get started with the presentation. So for those who have joined us so far, thank you very much. And we will get started in just about one minute. So give us one more minute. Okay, it looks like we have everybody here for the most part. So we're gonna get started with the formal presentation. So first of all, first and foremost, thank you all for coming out today. We are very happy to have you for this CANR presentation. My name is Riley Van Pelt and I am an in-state admissions counselor for Michigan State University. Um, my territory focuses on the Northeast of Michigan as well as parts of the Southwest portions of Michigan and that's where I recruit students from. So very excited to have you today. And our main presenter is going to be Jeff Keeson. I'm going to have him introduce himself as well. All right. So good afternoon. Super happy to be here and have a chance to kind of speak with everyone. Like Riley said, my name is Jeff Keeson and I work here in the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources. And predominantly, I'm an assistant director for student recruitment and retention. So helping students explore programs and, and see how they might belong here. Excellent. Excellent. So I'm just going to pull up my slides real quick. And we'll have a five minute admissions presentation and then we'll jump right into CNR. So first of all, welcome, as I said. So today's agenda, we've uh, doing a quick welcome and introduction, which we just did. We're going to have a few admissions reminders as well as the formal presentation from Jeff. Um, after that, we're actually gonna open up to live Q&A. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation, you can post them in the Q&A button and we're going to answer them all live at the end of Jeff's presentation. So just stay tuned for that. It's also worth noting, we're gonna talk a little bit about the honors college sessions. So we do have some honors college sessions that are gonna be taking place on the 28th and 30th of June. So we actually, of July, we actually have one tomorrow so if you're interested in learning more about the Honors College, you can stay tuned for that. And Terrence or Maureen, my colleagues from admissions, will post that in the chat. So just a few admissions reminders that I want to start off with. So our application for admissions opens up on August 1st. So you can start applying to Michigan State University by then. The most important date that I want you to remember is the Halloween date. So our early action deadline is November 1st. So you can just think about it as apply to Michigan State by Halloween. If you apply to Michigan State by Halloween, you will have maximum scholarship consideration for all of our merit-based scholarships, and you will receive a decision back by the latest of January 15th. So no matter where you attend college, I encourage you to look at all the early action deadlines, but just so know for Michigan State, you're going to send your transcripts in and send in your final application by Halloween. So remember that. Um, when you're applying to Michigan State, you're going to want to use the same email for your application and future communications with MSU. So um, whatever your main email is, make sure to use that on your application because that's where we're going to send you all of your updates. So for example, if you submit your application, you're admitted to Michigan State, then um, if you use that same email, that's going to be the best way that we can contact you and let you know you've been admitted, which is always great news that we love to give you. Um, finally, we also have options to visit campus in person. So yes, we are open for some in-person tours. They are 90 minute tours that take place completely outside. And if you go to our admissions visit website, you can actually schedule a tour there. So um, if you do want the opportunity to visit Michigan State's campus, you can do so now. And we're very excited to bring you all back onto campus very soon. Hopefully you sign up. And as I mentioned with Honors College, um, we do have an honors college session tomorrow and on the 30th, but if you want to learn about other colleges as well, maybe engineering, business, education, and some of our residential colleges, you can also check out the other college sessions as well and register for them. There's going to be a link posted in the chat there as well, so you can sign up for any other colleges in Michigan State that you're interested in learning about. So with that being said, um, I am going to hand things off to Jeff and we're going to jump into the main CANR presentation. So thank you so much. Awesome. So thank you again for kind of joining us today. As we kind of introduced early on, my name is Jeff Keeson and I'm an assistant director for student recruitment and retention here in the College of Ag and Natural Resources. And we're going to spend a fair amount of time today, about 30 minutes or so, 
kind of looking at the student experience. So different programs you can study, how you can get involved as a Spartan, and how you can really make the material in your classes come alive. As we go through, you're more than likely to have some questions. Please feel free to put those in the Q&A or the chat. We'll have some time at the end. We're going to come back and really kind of dive into those. So as we go along, if there's something that interests you, please feel free to leave some kind of a note or a question in the chat, and then we'll come to that at the end. So with this, kind of thinking about the College of Ag and Natural Resources, it really is uh, kind of the very first and original college here at Michigan State. So we have been involved with kind of building relationships, solving problems, and meeting the needs of the world since 1855. And uh, it's a big major kind of speaking point for us being that, prime, uh, that premier very first land grant institution. And so within the College of Ag and Natural Resources, we have over 20 undergraduate programs. We're going to have a chance to look at these today and kind of think about different themes or kind of areas of focus to help you kind of explore similarities. And on top of that, we also have 50 graduate programs. So maybe if you really start loving what you're studying, maybe you get intrigued in that master's or that PhD, you want to continue on and do some research, we have even more programs at the graduate level. So overall on campus, we have a community of over 4,000 students. And these students are studying in every one of our, of our disciplines all across campus. And that includes 14 different buildings and 12 on-campus research centers. So it, it gives you a lot of space to really kind of make your material and your classwork come alive, whatever that interest might be. Here in Michigan, we have about 17 and a half thousand acres for research. And that's looking at everything from agriculture, thinking about animal production and forestry research. And so if you're trying to get a sense of maybe what size that might look like, it's about 27 square miles. Or if you're maybe one of our, our friends is joining us, it uses a metric system. It's just over 70 square kilometers of research area all across the state. And we also have study abroad opportunities on all seven continents. So as that kind of premier, very first pioneering land grant institution, we've really taken charge of this idea of studying the environment around us. And being that land grant institution, it's important for us to acknowledge the land on which Michigan State University resides. So with that, I'd like to offer this land acknowledgement. And Michigan State University occupies the ancestral, traditional, and contemporary lands of the Anishinaabeg the Three Fires Confederacy of Ojibwa, Odawa, and Potawatomi peoples. In particular, the university resides on land ceded in 1819 Treaty of Saginaw, and we recognize Michigan's 12 federally recognized Native nations, historic Indigenous communities in Michigan, Indigenous individuals and communities who live here now, and those who have been forcibly removed from their homelands. In offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm Indigenous sovereignty, history, and experiences. And here in the College of Ag and Natural Resources, we have programs across so many different fields. So you might ask yourself, what can I study? So as you're thinking about this, as you're making this big decision to explore what comes next, thinking about those four years after high school of, of what you might want to study, what you might want to do, how you might want to have an impact on the world, maybe you're interested in business and education. Maybe you're really concerned about some of the things we're seeing on the news when thinking about the environment, conservation, and nature. Maybe you're curious and you want to focus something to do with engineering, construction, or design, something that might feel a little bit more of that creative problem-solving field. Perhaps you're, you're interested in medicine, healthcare, and public health, especially after the last year, and, and thinking about the, the overall kind of toll and cost of the pandemic. Maybe you're, you've been motivated by that. Maybe you have an interest in animals, food, and plants, thinking about our, our food systems and the sustainability of those. Maybe you're intrigued by field sports and you're really interested in how to take care of those very, very high-end uh, sport turf grass areas that our athletes are playing on. Maybe you're following the Olympics right now. Maybe you have a general interest in science and technology and you, you see that there's possibility here, but maybe you're not quite sure what it is that you'd wanna study. Perhaps you're really just interested in improving and building communities of, of getting people together to kind of take care of those places around them. Possibly you're, you're just interested in helping others and making a difference in the world. If anything here sounded interesting to you, if any of those things you read or heard and you thought, yes, that's what I'm looking for, then really you belong here. 
And so in the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources, we're really concerned and thinking about what life in the year 2050 is going to look like. And it might sound like it's a far ways off. We've got about 29 years before we're at this 2050 kind of date. But when we're thinking about it, some, some projections, some science that we've been kind of uh, following the past few years, past few decades, it's kind of raising some eyebrows. So as we're thinking about this, we're going to have a global population of roughly 10 billion people. So that's that's adding on about another 2.7, 2.8 billion people to where we're at right now. As we have more people, we're going to have a demand for more homes, roughly about a billion more places to call home. Maybe these are kind of combined buildings. Maybe these are individual structures we might think of as a house. But we're going to have to kind of explore new ways to provide housing and really in a way to do that, that amasses over a billion more places like this. On top of it, we're going to have to produce 70% more food than what we currently do. And then think about here in the United States that we have 40% of the food we produce ends up in landfills as, as food waste. So how can we produce more, but then also reduce the amount of waste that we have within the system? 19 of the hottest years globally have been recorded since the year 2000. So we're seeing a, a kind of global increase in temperature. We're seeing more erratic weather patterns. That's led to droughts in some areas, flooding in others. We've seen record highs in places like Antarctica as far as temperature, record highs in as far north as the Arctic Circle and Siberia. And we've seen incredibly productive storm seasons. So all of this is showing us that we need to have a better understanding of our, our environmental impact, especially as we're looking at a changing climate and thinking about these new realities. So as you hear some of this, it, it seems like there's a lot of question marks about the next 29 years or so getting us to the year 2050. And so you might ask yourself, you know, how can I as one person make a difference? And this is really the question we're asking in all of our programs is what can we do within each and every single one of these majors to support the environment, to support that sustainability, to look at food and to look at overall human health. And so what we've tried to do is break down all of our programs into four broad themes. So you can kind of explore these majors, these programs based on kind of similar ideas and things you might study. So within this, as we're looking at it, it's best to think of it in these four broad categories. So we have agriculture programs that focus traditionally on plants and animals. These are plants and animals produced for our food system, but also understanding the environmental kind of cost benefits, pros, cons, everything that goes into that production cycle. And it really looks at agriculture from a scientific lens. So sometimes you might hear the word of scientific agriculture or precision agriculture. We're going to dive into that a little bit. What does that exactly mean? We also have a number of programs thinking about built environments. And so this is the interior spaces that we're in. This is the exterior spaces that we're in. Essentially, if you're watching this webinar, the space that surrounds you are built environment programs study. So this is thinking about it from a construction standpoint and from a design standpoint. So what kinds of materials are we using, but also going a little bit deeper and thinking about how does this space function? How can it function better? What does this look like? We also have a number of programs that very directly coordinate with human health. So if you have ever thought about free health professions, free medicine, maybe a, a physician's assistant or becoming a dentist, we have programs that prepare you for that as well. We've also got some really cool things that are happening in human health when looking at the food side of things. We're gonna talk about some of the exciting stuff that our alumni are doing. And then we also have our areas focusing on natural resources. And this is really that other piece of being in the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources is thinking about sustainable environments. So knowing that as people, we are a part of the environment and that our actions have uh, consequences, both positive and negative with the world around us. So really getting a sense of these potentially wild spaces, but also of the resources that are there and how we can better conserve and how we can better utilize them. So we're going to look at all four of these and break them apart a little bit differently. As you're looking at this, you might see some majors in multiple areas. That's not a mistake, that's by design. And the reason for that is some of our majors have concentrations where you can further specialize your area of study. So we'll, we'll kind of talk about a few of those when we get there. 
But if you see this major in multiple points, it means that you might be able to kind of even further customize the experience that you have in the classroom. So the first place we're going to look at is agriculture, plants, and animals. And this is really that foundation for the College of Ag and Natural Resources. So when we were founded in 1855, there really were no other agricultural schools here in the United States for us to base off of. So it was, it was an interesting time because we were essentially charged with this idea of creating an agricultural college, an agricultural school in the United States, but there was no framework. So here at Michigan State, what we did at the time was really kind of look at the emerging American medical school system. And why that's important is that it follows kind of the structure in each one of our majors is that it's 50% where you're looking at kind of the theory, kind of that background knowledge, maybe that traditional classroom, and then 50% is going to be hands-on. So it's application. It's putting everything that you are learning in the classroom and that kind of setting into real-world application. So our four-year programs are broad. They would include our agribusiness management, so really kind of studying the business of food production. A lot of different ways you can specialize this if you are interested in, lo in logistics, how things move around, if you're creative and you're interested in marketing, or if you want to work with both uh, folks that own their own farms that are growing their produce and getting that to market. There's creative different ways that you can get involved there. There's agriculture, food, natural resources, education. And this is one of our programs you're gonna see in a couple of places. So maybe you're really passionate and really interested in our food systems and the world around us, and you want to teach. This is a program that's also in partnership with the College of Education so that you can teach in that uh, sixth grade through high school setting. So this is one of our education programs. If you're interested in this, this would kind of let you get into the school system to work with up and coming students, as well as their families and the communities around these issues of agriculture, food, natural resources. Our animal science program is our largest undergraduate major. And so this program is very, very broad and it encompasses a number of different areas. Maybe you are interested in being a dairy producer. Maybe you want to work in the poultry industry. Maybe you're interested in research so that you work with farmers, with producers, with uh, uh, hobby farmers to help them make the best choices when it comes to nutrition for their animals. Maybe you're interested in becoming a vet and you wanna get into veterinary medicine. All of those tracks exist within animal science and you're gonna have an opportunity early in the program to explore those different career aspects. Biosystems engineering is another program you're gonna see in a couple of different places. But this is really thinking about how do we engineer those systems that essentially kind of provide for our modern day amenities. So it's thinking about water, it's thinking about public health, it is thinking about food systems, and it's thinking about how do we do that in a more sustainable, more productive fashion? What does that look like? Crop and soil sciences is a very, very important part of the agricultural cycle. Specifically, it's about looking at crops and the soils that they grow in. So thinking about that soil as really kind of its own micro uh, environment and understanding everything that's happening in there and how that is going to either help or hinder overall kind of health of the crop. So there's a specialty in here called agronomy, which is really studying how we produce crops. And a lot of that comes down to working with producers, working with local farmers, helping them make the, the best decisions for them using science. So you could even get into using things like uh, drones and remote sensing, where maybe you do aerial reconnaissance over a given field, and you're looking at near infrared imagery so that you get a sense of the overall plant health. And then you can help that farmer, that producer, really look at where they might want to apply more water, more fertilizer, what fertilizer, so that it's more specific, it's more focused, it's more efficient. Entomology is a study of insects. And so this comes in basically three different varieties when thinking about agriculture. We have insects that are very, very helpful when it comes to helping pollinate things like honeybees. We have insects that can be very detrimental. So if you have that backyard garden, thinking about things like aphids, they can destroy a garden space. But also within a, an entomology, thinking not only about those, those two interactions within our food system, but as we're thinking about life in the year 2050, thinking about ways to produce a very 
a carbon efficient form of high quality protein? What about insects as a form of food? So there's a lot of really cool uh, interdisciplinary research being done there with an entomology. It's another program we're going to see in some other places. And then one of our, our final programs here is horticulture. So this is the cultivation production of high quality plants. So thinking about things that might be grown in a greenhouse or a hoop house, and then also looking at some of the, the high end, maybe ornamentals, looking at things that a, a landscape designer might have within a, a specific design. So horticulture is very broad, lots of opportunities there. And that really kind of rounds out agriculture, plants, and animals. It's really thinking about the scientific production of the, the crops, the livestock that we consume with our, our environment. The next focus area we're going to look at is built environments. So thinking construction and design. And so the, the programs that this includes traditionally is going to be construction management, interior design, and landscape architecture. There's also crossover with horticulture as well as packaging. And so packaging, we'll, we'll talk about in a number of different places, but just like we saw with horticulture being for food production, horticulture also gets into things like landscape design. So thinking about the different types of plants, the different types of crops that we might put in a given place for a very specific reason. And so within this, within kind of the, the field of construction management, you're essentially studying how do we build buildings? And so this is a program that has a, a very, very high placement rate. Uh, students generally love it once they get it in the first class with, because of how hands-on it is. But it's something that you can look at it from three different levels. So you are looking at residential construction. So how we might build and construct homes. You are looking at kind of the, the large industrial or commercial uh, construction where you're thinking about, you know, how do we build very large buildings? How do we build maybe a hospital system? And then there's also kind of the, the heavy industry or the heavy side of construction management, which is really thinking infrastructure. So roadways, bridges, kind of how do we get goods from one place to the next? So construction management will give you experience in all of these. And then from there, you can also kind of continue on to focus. Interior design is really thinking about how do we design the spaces that we're in? So this goes beyond something like maybe you're thinking interior decorating, where maybe it's about how do we decorate or progress a place. Interior design is actually thinking about how all of these different systems have to work within one another. Also, what does the physical space look like? Uh, from there, we also have our, our landscape architecture program, which is then thinking about that very similar kind of field of interior design, but for those outside environments. In the past year, we probably all spent maybe a little bit more time inside than we would have preferred. So a landscape architect thinks about not only the aesthetics, but how can this outdoor space really help with people's overall health? How can it be something that gives back to a construction project? So thinking about things like a green roof, or maybe thinking about interior green wall spaces. What does that look like? How can we use, how can we essentially use plants as a way to filter and improve air quality within our, within our interior spaces. And then packaging is really a, it's a unique program started in 1952 here at Michigan State that studies how do we design the, basically the, the packages that move items from one place to the next. And it comes in a wide variety of different fields. So within the, the built environments, you might think of packaging as how we move things. How do we get things to the construction site? thinking about not only the environmental cost of that packaging, thinking about reducing the use of plastics, but also knowing that we have to have packages that can maybe support, protect something over a large distance. And it's, it's a very interdisciplinary program. So the built environment really thinks about the world around us that we live in, work in, and experience every single day. And then really getting into where are those materials coming from? How are those places being designed and built? How can we do that better, especially as we're looking at some of the, the major points of life in 2050? Our, our third kind of category is human health. And so this is, is very broad. You're going to see packaging and biosystems engineering again. Uh, biosystems engineering in this sense is then thinking about, uh, like we talked a little bit about maybe some water systems, irrigation systems, uh, public sewer systems thinking about how do the, the large infrastructure systems that we use on a daily basis help our overall human health. 
uh, packaging in this regard is really thinking about things like medical packaging. It is thinking about, and this is a really cool thing here in the packaging uh, building, is that we have an ambulance simulator. So it is a, it's a full mock-up of an ambulance that can simulate going about 55 miles an hour through kind of uh, rough roads rocking back and forth. But thinking about that very specific context, how can we create packages that are easy to open, that are sterile, that protect the, the life-saving device or medicine inside, but can also maybe be completely open by someone that only has maybe the utility of one hand, and maybe their mouth. So they have to be able to tear open a package because maybe they're intervening, maybe they're bracing themselves in an ambulance. So it's thinking about medical packaging. From there, thinking about dietetics, if you're interested in becoming a registered dietitian, dietetics is going to be the way to get there. This program really focuses on the science of food and how it relates back to our, our overall health. Nutritional sciences is somewhat similar to dietetics in that you are looking at how food relates to health, but you can get into more of a systems perspective. So if you're interested in international health, if you're interested in kind of the idea of uh, large scale public health, you can focus in nutritional sciences. There's also a pre-med path, which is looking at uh, biomedical molecular science. So if you're interested in that, you could do a, say maybe a pre-med program focusing in nutritional sciences and then launch into a medical school program. Food industry management looks at the really essentially it's commodities, how food moves around. And then food science is thinking about the, the science, the structure, the storage and preservation of our food. So this is a really cool story that we have one student working right now that is an alumni, they've graduated, they're working at NASA, essentially designing food that can last for five years on the shelf, essentially getting to the point of sending people to Mars and back for a five-year trip. So we have Spartans working at NASA, helping them develop food solutions for astronauts going to another planet. That's one of the ways you can kind of think about food. You can also think about designing, developing your own food brands, thinking about maybe some of that research with entomology, thinking about maybe making insects more palatable as a protein source. But it's also thinking about flavor, the crunch, the texture, the smell, the color of the food that we consume. The fourth and kind of final area we're going to look at is natural resources. So thinking about sustainable environments. And so here you're going to see our agriculture, food, natural resource education programs again, as well as entomology. Uh, you're also going to see uh, environmental economics and management and environmental studies and sustainability. Environmental economics and management is really thinking about the business and the policies of the environment. So thinking about this economic activity, essentially economics, but what's the environmental cost? Environmental studies and sustainability then also looks at really getting into the, the environmental science aspect, but then thinking about people. So it's a very much a people focused program and that you're taking the environmental science aspect, such as ecology, looking at sustainability issues and applying them to how do we then work within communities, work with partners around the state, around the country, around the globe. Fisheries and wildlife is one of our most popular programs. It's actually one of the only ways that if you want to get into the Red Cedar River and have an experience on campus, you can do that through a fisheries and wildlife program. And the very first course you can take in your first year, Fisheries and Wildlife 101, you put on a pair of waders and then you are doing research with the local fish populations, doing an ecological survey in the Red Cedar. So it's really cool. And when we're kind of back on campus, you can see students typically in the fall this is when they're going to be in waders doing that research on campus. But this is thinking about our kind of wildlife, both on the land and in the water and everywhere in between. So also thinking about birds and some of those different kinds of uh, animal species that might be a little bit in both places. And it's about the conservation and the protection of those different animals. And so this is another program that has a pre-veterinary path. So if you are interested in becoming a vet, maybe you want to work with wildlife or large exotic animals. Maybe, you know, you really get interested as you watch some documentaries on wildlife in Africa and you want to study lions and you want to be a big cat vet. Fisheries and wildlife can prepare you for vet med school, specifically with the pre-med background or the pre-vet background here in the program. And then our last program here is kind of looking at forestry. 
And really when it comes to forestry, it is thinking about our forest both as a place to conserve, but as a place that offers a lot of very important lumber and timber products. So it's thinking about high quality timber. It is thinking about ways that we can sustainably harvest, thinking about sustainable biofuels made from those products. It's also looking at conservation efforts, both at the kind of state, local, regional, national, and international lens. And so all of these programs here with the natural resources are really thinking about how do we sustain the environment. Beyond these kind of four broad categories, it's also important to think about the Spartan experience. So as a student within the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources, this is what your day to day can look like. We have opportunities for you to be hands on in a lab setting to be doing some maybe forestry applications where you're working with timber. Maybe you're interested in taking care of livestock, or maybe it's kind of getting involved with uh, different types of sustainable production. So thinking about honeybee beehives, possibly in kind of urban areas. Maybe it's about the, the future of organic or uh, genetically modified organisms. Or maybe you're just really interested within kind of the essentially that agricultural background. And maybe you wanted to get connected with the, the MSU Rodeo Club and you wanted to learn more about the Spartan Stampede that happens in February, kind of our, our on-campus rodeo. Regardless of how you want to improve the world, how you want to give back, your, your experience here is gonna be like no other. So we have study abroad experiences on all seven continents. You get to do research in and around some of the most beautiful locations here in Michigan, as well as get to learn and work alongside world-class faculty and researchers. So as you're kind of thinking about this, there's gonna be more events this fall to continue on exploring. Where we're at right now, knowing that we wanted to have a little bit of time for some questions and answers, uh, this is the point where I'm gonna kind of end the show here, kind of bring it back to the screen and really say that, you know, what questions do you have and what other kinds of things can we explore? What is what's out there, what's on people's mind? So while we're waiting for a few more questions to pop up, we have one um, one question that I think we should get answered. Um, and at this time, if you do have questions about anything from the CA in our presentation, please post that with the Q&A tool. Um, we'll answer this first question, though. Of, if we want to watch this presentation again, will we be able to view the recorded version of this present program later? So um, as far as I know, um, yes, um, we will have this posted. I do not know where exactly this will be posted to. Jeff, do you have any insight onto that? At this point, I don't. However, once we kind of get the recording, we can always see about having it on our, our future students page within the college. Absolutely, absolutely. And we'll send more information to your emails after this presentation. Um, looks like the next question that we have are what kind of areas of horticulture can we study? So horticulture is a massive, massive field. And it's something that there are lots of opportunities. Right now, we're, we're kind of seeing that if we wanted to triple enrollment in this program, we could kind of find jobs for every one of those students. And the reason for that is there is a large, large demand as we have a retiring workforce and not a lot of folks have kind of come up behind them. So traditionally, when thinking about horticulture, it really is that high-end crop production side. So folks that are interested in maybe kind of the, the high-end organic crops, thinking about things like tomatoes, strawberries, fruits, orchards, that's kind of a thing. We have programs there. It's also looking at some of the kind of uh, high-end ornamentals. So if you wanted to work with landscape architectures, work with landscape designers, you have opportunities to look at those, both the, the annuals and the perennials. But then there's also kind of even thinking about here in Michigan, one of our Kind of key agricultural crops. We just had the, the cherry festival in Traverse City is looking at high-end things like cherries, but it's also looking at things like uh, grapes for viticulture, for wine production. So horticulture is very, very uh, broad. The, the cool thing about it is it's all about the study of plants and how plants work, and then it's about how do we grow those plants. So if it's something that you can grow, if it's something that can be harvested, more than likely we have the, the skills and the, the tools here to help you learn how to produce it. Um, it looks like we don't have any other questions in here. Um, we'll give everyone just about one more minute to ask any questions that they have or any questions that they want. 
So um, while we're waiting just one more minute, um, I will ask one question. So what kind of uh, research opportunities are available for CNR students? We have research opportunities all across the globe. So it really depends, and this is kind of a, a non-answer in a sense, but it depends on what you wanna do. And so some of the, the longstanding research studies we have would be doing kind of that field work experience at Kellogg Biological Station, which is in Hickory Corners, Michigan. It's about an hour and 15 minutes away from campus, but there's a lot of ecological uh, research being done there, looking at sustainability. Actually has one of the longest continuous running sustainability ecological research uh, fields anywhere in the US. At the same point, if you get interested in policy, I mean, the state capital is just a few minutes away. So we have a lot of students doing work within the state government, within the Department of Natural Resources. We also have things like the Glass and Endemmer Scholars Program, which is where students from every single kind of program background within ANR are more than welcome to apply. But then this is doing a summer internship in Washington, DC, where you are working with politicians, with lobbyists, getting to really getting, diving into the research of some of the policy proposals. So we've also got folks that will do their, their research all around the globe. We've got a number of research projects in India and in different countries around Africa. Just depends on, on what you're most interested in doing. It's a great question. Thank you, thank you. We do actually have a few more student questions that came in as we we're answering this. Um, Izzy asks, what kind of jobs do graduates find after graduation in environmental science and in the environmental science and sustainability major? Excellent. So it really depends. And so this is, this is our most flexible undergraduate major when thinking about environmental studies and sustainability, because students can customize based on what they're most interested in. So we have some folks that get into uh, working for nonprofits, working for non-governmental organizations. We have some people that might get interested in public education. So not necessarily kind of that K-12 setting, but thinking maybe about doing work with MSU Extension. So Extension Services are on every county here in Michigan. Uh, we've got folks that then continue on for graduate school, people that are working for startup businesses, people that get into consulting. So it really depends on what you're in interested in. As you're going through a program like Environmental Studies and Sustainability, there's a lot of opportunity to customize. So it depends on skill sets, what you want to study. It's a field that we see kind of continuing to expand, honestly, for the next 20, 30 years, just because of the major emphasis on that sustainability mindset in almost every single field. So this kind of gives you the background for that research mindset. And then it's also thinking about policy. With that, you can also add in minors from any undergraduate program here at Michigan State. And that's where you could connect with our academic advisor with Gene Stevelton to talk about different minors, if you get to the program early enough, if you want to do double majors, it's really something that just depends as far as, you know, where you want to go with it. Absolutely. And it looks like we have one last question from Ethan. Um, is there a specific CANR, CANR subscriber list for upcoming events this fall? Or are there more ways for students to learn more coming this fall? Yes. So if you are interested, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop this link in the in the chat box here. But for our future students page, basically, the uh, easiest way to do it is if you Google a and uh, future students, this will pop up. But if you go here, and I'll, I'll share my screen so you can see what I'm looking at here. We have some of our events already kind of set. We will be having more that we set for the spring for kind of our admitted and in, in, incoming students. But here on the future students page, there's a lot of information where we're kind of going through our our life in 2050 updates. So you're going to see more of that this fall. But if you click on the recruitment events, you can see things that we already have set up. And so we have a number of college nights that are going to be offered typically Thursdays at 630 Eastern Standard Time this fall. Uh, there's, if you get down in here a little bit further, they start September 23rd. This is where we're going to look at life in 2050. Then a week later, we're going to look at agriculture, plants, and animals. Then after that, built environments, then human health, the natural resources. So we've got some events coming up late September, then going into early to mid-October. And those are all going to be online free of charge. You can drop in. And then once we once we go through those, we're going to record them and kind of post them to a YouTube channel that we're going to have listed here as well. So 
that's what we have for the fall. In the spring, each one of our undergraduate uh, majors is going to actually have a, a major spotlight. And these are typically designed for students that are interested in the program. They could also be current students at MSU that just want to explore. But those are really unique because it's a half hour with our academic advisors who can talk about classes, current student projects, research opportunities. Those will be coming uh, right now tentatively, we're going to say about middle of March in 22. Awesome. And it looks like we have one more question that popped up. I was going to say that was a good way to end on how to learn more, but we have one more question. Um, what kind of math is involved in food science and nutritional science? Excellent. So what I will do is part of this, I'm going to share my screen again so you can kind of see what I'm looking at. I'm more than happy to send this out to anyone that's interested. But within our future students page, if you click on our academic programs, you can then see all of our undergraduate majors. And so if we're going to pick on one, let's look at food science. So we can kind of see, you know, what kind of math you might have to get into. When you get to these page, each and every single one of our major pages is pretty well laid out and very similar. So whatever information you find here, you'll find on every other page. So it's easy to do some comparison. But when you get to this, as you get this point where you say, see, apply to Michigan State, there's a link right above it, learn more about the requirements, food science. Click on this, it'll take you to the registrar's page. And then as we scroll through this, I'm just going to kind of very quickly go through some of the kind of required stuff up here. When we get to all the following courses, you're going to see for food science, it's going to be through our survey of calculus course. And so this is something as you're working with academic advisors, they're going to kind of help you with, we can come back again, looking at nutritional sciences, knowing that was one of the other ones that was there. Again, scrolling down, seeing the apply to Michigan State, coming up to learn more about the requirements, coming back to the registrar. Again, I'm gonna zoom past some of this stuff right here. And then when we get to the math course, Again, survey of calculus, and then it says one of the following. You might also take calculus one. This is where when you have this kind of a elective, you can choose one or the other. It's very important for you to talk about your long-term goals with your academic advisor. In this case, it would be with Dr. Jennifer Ekstrom. And what she'll do is based on where you say you want to go. So if you're thinking grad school, if you're thinking med school, if you wanted to get into the world of work once you graduate. Based on that discussion, she'll help you choose the most appropriate class. But you're just kind of looking at both of those. It looks like the, the survey of calculus at a minimum is going to be that course. Excellent. And it looks like, as far as I see, there are no more questions. So thank you so much, much Jeff, for answering all the questions. Um, just on a final note, um, please remember that our application does open up August 1st. Um, and our early action deadline is by Halloween. So you can just remember, apply to Michigan State, send in those high school transcripts by Halloween. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to reading your applications. And if you have any um, additional questions, I highly encourage you to check out the CANR website. Um, I have a lot of useful information for future students. So um, that's all my final words. Jeff, any uh, concluding words for everybody? I'll just thank everyone for joining us. If you are interested in learning more, I posted that future students page. We've got some events coming up this fall. Keep checking back. We're going to have some, some new stuff for our Life in 2050 project that we're, we're kind of bringing together and building out. And then looking forward to the spring for some of those major spotlights. Absolutely. Absolutely. So hope to see you at some of those major spotlights. Go green, go white. And I hope you guys all have a fantastic rest of your day.